Great big ass theropods. You love it. So I've already spoken at great length about some of the biggest theropods to have ever lived. T-Rex, Spinosaurus, Gigantosaurus, and Carcharodontosaurus. I've missed out some of the guys that aren't quite as mainstream. So let's take a look at the Earth Lizard, Mapusaurus. Back in 1997, the Argentinian Canadian Dinosaur Projects excavated material from the Huencal Formation of Argentina. It took a whole four years to get this bad boy out and a further five years of study before Rodolfo Correa and Phil Curry finally named this new material as Mapusaurus rosier. Mapusaurus was a member of the Gigantosaurines, a group of theropods within the Carcharodontosaurids, with an obvious member being Gigantosaurus itself. Its close affinity is a big one here too, as Mapusaurus is almost identical in terms of skeleton to Gigantosaurus. Similarities include the long Carcharodontosaurid typical skull, complete with a highly rugose or wrinkled nasal ridge that led to a crest, peaking just before the eye sockets. The only real difference between Mapusaurus and Gigantosaurus is that Mapusaurus lacks a second opening within the quadrate of its skull, along with some tiny differences in that bumpy nasal ridge and the teeth being relatively shorter for a member of this group. The only other difference outside of the skull between these two is that Mapusaurus is often constructed as being slightly shorter in length at between 11 to 12.1 meters, or 36 to 40 feet, and around five metric tons. As to what kind of animal this was and how it lived, let's first put it into context by taking a look at where it lived. Mapusaurus was found in the Huencal Formation in Argentina which dates to around 97 to 93.5 million years ago. This formation is thought to have been laid down in a fairly arid environment with a few seasonal streams. Despite the aridity, plenty of fossilised pollen shows that this area had its fair share of various flora, including gymnosperms and angiosperms. This formation is also one of the richest Patagonian sites in terms of vertebrate fossils, with abundant freshwater fish, curled turtles, squamates and sphenodonts along with crocodilians. Of course, dinosaurs were the most dominant vertebrates, which included Ornithischians such as Chachisaurus, an abundant number of sauropods like Cydosaura, Lemaesaurus, Chikarosaurus, Coconsaurus, Bustingoritaitan, and the joint first contender for the biggest terrestrial vertebrate to ever live, Argentinosaurus. There's also a diverse number of theropods in this region that Mapusaurus seemingly ruled over, including Abeliosaurids like Trauchosaurus and Scorpiovenator, Elaphrosaurines like Huancosaurus, Peravians such as Averoraptor, and other Carcharodontosaurs including Taurovenator. Now this seems like an overabundance, but it should be noted that this formation represents a whole 3.5 million years. So oftentimes one species led to another. So a predator the size of a male African bush elephant is scary in and of itself. But just how formidable was this animal? Well, Mapusaurus isn't thought to have been primarily a scavenger. Much like his cousin Gigantosaurus, Mapusaurus likely had a powerful bite but nothing special for its size, especially when compared to the likes of Tyrannosaurs, instead concentrating more on the speed of the bite rather than the strength. And dead bodies aren't known for their speed. These powerful quick bites were better for catching and bringing down prey of a similar size or smaller, rather than resisting torsional stress or bone crushing. From these adaptations, it looks like Mapusaurus hunted animals, again, either its own size or smaller, likely the smaller sauropods from the area like Lamasaurus or Pathartisaura. That or these quick bites were used in a technique to bring down prey bigger than itself. A personal theory I have here is related to the speed in which Mapusaurus could deliver a bite, despite not being especially quick on its feet nor having prey that are known for their speed. But the quickest part of a sauropod was likely the tail or the head, and Mapusaurus would need a relatively quick bite if that's what it was going for. Now again, it couldn't resist as much torsion or crush quite as well, but I think it was capable of achieving just enough to take down the likes of these smaller sauropods. But what about the biggest land animal of all time? Argentinosaurus is, from what's been found so far, one of the only animals in this formation bigger than Mapusaurus. And predators will often hunt animals bigger than them if they hunt in packs. Now before you start saying that I'm clutching at straws just so I can make it a giant killer, remember that a lot of smaller theropods were from this formation too and they still needed to be fed in order to keep up that success. So maybe size was a hint at this dinosaur's niche partitioning. Besides, I'm not actually the only one who has suggested the pack hunting theory. 
A large bone bed was found with between seven to nine Mapusaurus individuals at various growth stages, showing the potential for a large family group. Of course, it's completely possible that this shows some sort of predator trap, accumulating individuals over time that did not interact. But no other predators were found in particular association with them, nor was there any associated herbivores that might have attracted them there. So the paleontologists that originally described Mapusaurus have suggested that this was a pack hunter. If you think it's a bit of a stretch in terms of huge sauropods, you've never seen a pack of wild dogs taking down a wildebeest, or any other pack animal taking down megafauna 10 times the size of an individual. So when you have 7 to 9 megatheropods, even titans like a fully grown Argentinosaurus would wish they had worn their brown trousers. In fact, this site has caused the paleontologists studying it to speculate that Mapusaurus was showcasing the cojones to take on this titanosaur, with Argentinosaurus showing some possible feeding traces associated with Mapusaurus. Though, of course, this could have been scavenging. But there is a lot of evidence that points towards the pack hunting behaviour, so let's momentarily assume that it wasn't, and that it was regularly able to take down animals like Argentinosaurus. Well, as is often the case, Mapusaurus probably didn't go for fully grown and healthy individuals just to make its life as easy as possible. But another theory that has been proposed, not necessarily with Mapusaurus, but with other theropods, is what has been dubbed flesh grazing. This is essentially where the predator will not kill its prey, instead picking a large enough individual that can take a non-lethal bite or two and still walk away to fight another day. This takes less energy, places the predator in far less danger, stops rivalry from other prospective scavengers, and means that it has a much more consistently supplied food source, maybe even feeding from the same individual on several occasions. Now it's very much possible that Mapusaurus was employing this method to feed on giants like Argentinosaurus, especially if social hunting was involved, since they could have herded an individual for grazing. The only thing casting doubt on this, if Mapusaurus was indeed a pack hunting animal, is that even a giant like Argentinosaurus could not take up to 8 to 10 possible bites, with one per pack member, from a theropod of this size without passing out from shock and blood loss. So even this behemoth would have to die. But what kind of tools would it have to carry out such a job, even in a group? Well first up we have that long skull and relatively short teeth. This would give Mapusaurus some pretty good reach without teeth getting in the way before a proper bite was made, meaning as much can be grabbed as possible. With large chunks being taken out by multiple individuals, it would only be a matter of time before even giant sauropods would succumb, making this a long haul game similar to wolf pack hunting. But this is all just playing devil's advocate, right? This discovery of multiple individuals in a single place could have just been a predator trap or even a frenzy feed. Well, whilst it is possible, experts don't actually think that's likely. Again, this bone bed shows multiple growth stages, and if this was the case of many individuals coming to a feeding site, or it being a feeding frenzy similar to Komodo dragons, it's likely that the smaller individuals wouldn't have bothered, since trying to get in on this action would have presented a much more immediate danger from the adults than just starving to death. But if these guys formed a social group or even a family unit, the smaller and more inexperienced individuals would have a far safer time staying with those beefy veterans. Another piece of indirect evidence might actually be also seen in the resources of the area. Patagonia at the time was actually pretty scarce and arid, with Argentinosaurus being one of the only outliers in an ecosystem where animals weren't all that big or in as high abundance. A predator the size of Mapusaurus needs a lot of feeding. So it's pretty strange for an animal to get this big when food is relatively scarce. Unless, of course, you have the means to take down the biggest animal which can keep multiple individuals fed for a long time. So pack hunting for Mapusaurus might not be just a possibility, it might be a necessary explanation as to how such a large animal found success here. But as always, I want to hear what you guys think. Do you agree? And if not, I'd love for you to let me know so we can start a discussion down below. And whilst you're doing that, I'm going to answer today's question, which comes from Business Teapot, who's asked, what is the biggest carnivorous dinosaur and what's the biggest herbivorous dinosaur? And if the biggest carnivorous fought the largest herbivorous, who would win? A fitting question indeed. So straight off the bat, the biggest carnivorous dinosaur was most likely T-Rex. Other megatheropods may have been longer or even taller, but when we're talking size in animals, we are referring to the mass or weight, unless stated otherwise. 
and T-Rex's estimation bringing in as the heaviest. But the biggest herbivorous dinosaur is a slightly more difficult question to answer. Now it's most definitely a sauropod, but animals of such size normally leave behind very scant remains. And as a result, the size estimations are normally very vague. Some of the top contenders are between 60 to 80 tons are examples like Mementosaurus, Puertosaurus, the aforementioned Argentinosaurus and Patagotitan. The latter two of which I quite literally weigh up in my video here. But whichever one it was, who would actually win in a fight against T-Rex? Well, again, a predator will almost never take on prey larger than itself or even the same size on its own, as it's not likely to go their way. Now, considering how much these sauropods outweighed even a T-Rex, I would most certainly give the win to the herbivores if it was one individual pitted against another. But again, this entire video has been about how deadly pack hunters can be for even the giant sauropods. So if a group of T-Rexes work together, maybe the odds would be a little more even. Thank you always for submitting that question, and if you have a question that you'd like me to answer, be sure that you are subscribed so you can keep an eye out for when the window opens when I take new questions in and I make a community post. Uh, I'm not taking questions in video comments just because I want to get every single one answered and they'll just get lost. Alternatively, you can get first dibs on your question being answered at any time as one of the many perks you get as a patron, so I'll leave a link to that below. And as always, thank you so much to everyone else for watching and supporting this channel. Your support, your kind words and your feedback have been just overwhelmingly valuable to me and I can't wait to grow the channel for you. Until then, I'll catch you guys next time.